Hello, it's Super B Shirley with BBSBs, and today is Sunday, February 20th, 2022. So at 1 p.m. in the afternoon, and it is 46 degrees Fahrenheit, nine mile an hour per winds, and it feels like 41 with the wind. Every time I think I can get by with no gloves or hat, the wind kicks up. So come along with me while we take a look inside this hive. Pretty sure there are no live bees left. Mom reported the last time she cleared bees from the entrance was June 26th. She thought she had done it a time or two after that, but just didn't get it on the calendar. That's January 26th, not June 26th. When I arrived on the property the second week in February. Uh, I haven't cleaned any bees out of the entrance. So let's see what's going on. Smells really good. So divide a board. And we have moisture all along there. So this was the bottom where my screws are. So there was uh, oh space for the bees to move and air to flow. You've got frost. I missed filming removing the wool pillow and then the thin shim that was between the top bars and the wool pillow. This is frame nine. It's a little bit of moisture up there and mold. And this side's got frost up in the corner by my hand. A little bit of mold up there. Here's the cracked frame. Cracked comb, I should say. That's gushing honey. So I'm thinking next year I'll only be including six frames in my winter nest. This is frame eight. This was the full frame of honey that they should have used in the spring. And obviously it cracked due to the cold temperatures. No moisture on this, no mold on this one. Although there's frost in the upper corner where my finger is. So far these three frames were not propolized or else they just, they just broke free. This one. It's got some cracked comb. No mold, that's frame seven. Frame six. No mold, good probably two months, month and a half worth of honey up there. Frame five, oh, sounds like they propolized that one a little bit. Look on the high wall next to me, you can see the frost pattern towards the top. No mold. That's interesting. There's a queen cell down there. I don't think that was there when I left him in the fall. No mold. 
and I'm looking for the queen. Empty queen cell. reference. Here's the board that I had over the top bars. No falling out. It would have been over frames five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And there is frost in here. This is frame four. I had marked that it had brewed. Another queen cup. Wow. This colony did not like its queens. I'm pretty sure it will be to itself pretty quickly. After I installed it, I think it swarmed into the swarm trap. So we had three colonies going all summer. Two of them are in this box. I put the swarm colony in the other end of this box because this is a 24 frame box. Moisture, I should get the camera in here. Moisture, approximately an inch and a half down on this side, not as much on this side, but at a weird little angle. Another queen cup. Wow. Well, if this hive had somewhat, somehow gone queenless <clears throat> after the last brood laying, they would be doomed because there would have been no other drones in the area. They were all kicked out by the time I did my last inspection. This frame is, he has a little bit of honey up there. Okay. A little bit of frost on the edge here. Well, we still have snow here, so sorry if it's kind of hard to see what's going on. I'll try to describe what I'm doing. I'm trying to find the queen as well. I will sort through all the bees down there and see if I can find her. It'd be good data to know exactly where she wound up on the floor. Okay, but I'll do that at the end because I do want to get some pictures of this frost before it thaws. All right, here's where they were all at. Frost in the upper corner here. Keep in mind, we think this hive died towards the end of January. So it's had a couple of weeks of in negative degree Fahrenheit nights. That would have allowed the cold to move in through the walls into the hive box, hive chamber, the brood chamber. I'm not sure if I showed this side. This side's got frost right there. This is the side that faces the entrance. Uh, this is hot, um, this is frame one. I marked it. It came from only one. It was a full frame of honey. And looks like they were mostly in between frames one, two, and three based on how many bees are at the bottom here. So they ate most of it up. 
branch is swinging off along the side that is closest to the wind. This side is closest to the entrance and that's not eaten all the way up. Frost. Frost right there. Yeah. Okay, and then this is the side facing the wall. The honey consumption pattern on this side is the same as the other side. They ate along the bottom and then along the side closest to the wind. And a little bit down here. All right, so the rest of this video will be me cleaning this out. And I'm going to show you what it looks like at the bottom here. Alright, so we had nine frames in here. This is all frost. Frost. But this has been without life for several weeks and we have negative Fahrenheit nights. So I'm not surprised to see frost here. I will get it all out of here though. This is what Looks like at the bottom. So that's my sweet pattern. I would stick the stick in there and pull them out. Looks like they clustered based on the depth. See the depth there. Depth of the bees, they clustered over one, two, and three, where that honey frame was. And then you can see the gusher. There's honey at the bottom from that cracked frame. So maybe not leave quite so full of a frame on either end in case they don't use it until the spring. It's just gonna crack with the cold temperatures if nobody's over there to keep it warm. That's a good lesson. So again, I think I will probably reduce the nest next winter to six or seven frames. So this is the entrance side. There's actually a nice chunk right there. This is the wind side of the box and there's some frost right there. So the first thing I want to do before I clean out all the bees is get a sampling and do an alcohol wash just to see if I have mites and what the count is about. I am treatment free so I don't intend on introducing any kind of chemicals I have to go purchase. I am just putting some bees in my mason jar here. I'm going to see, make sure I don't get the queen. I want to see if I can try to find her. And a typical sampling is a half a cup of bees. I got my wide mouth mason jar here. I can put in more bees because I have them. And so I'll do a cup, which is half height of the pint jar. And actually probably more than what you'd scoop if you were scooping live bees because they would all be fluttering around. All right, so that's good. put alcohol in there. I'm going to do Yeah, that's really good. Just rubbing alcohol. Shake for a minute. Okay, that's a minute. Got a spoon. And I will just strain out the bees and hopefully I don't have anything sitting in the bottom of my liquid. Okay. We had mites. 
There's about 20 left in the liquid. I had a cup of bees, which would be 600 bees. So 20 divided by six is about three or 4%. If I can do the math right. So about the same results as my other hive. All those little specks down there, the same size specks are the mites. You can look at my other video to see what the mites look like or just do an internet search. Okay, all right. So again, that is just a data point. Won't be doing any kind of treatments based on that. Just curious to see if we have them. All right, so the rest of the video, which I'm not gonna show all of, uh, if you want to see me sorting through bees, I did it on OB1. I'll pull up some though and do a little bit. Just so you can see them up close. All right, here is me just going through. I wanna to try to find the queen and just to show you up close what they look like. Uh, the queen in the other hive uh, was squished, her abdomen was squished. I'm pretty sure that was her. That is what stuck out to me when I was sorting through. I kind of discounted it until I re-looked, until I watched the video replay. So now that I kind of know what to look for, maybe if this one even had a queen, not sure. Okay, and this thing right here, probably if I zoomed in on it, there's a mite. Yep, I can see the look. I can see the little pinchers. Right, that speck right there. So, in relation to my honeybee. That's the mite. Yikes, right? They are creepy. If I would, how about I try to do a photo? Hopefully photo is gonna work today. Hard time doing it last time. So this is all I'm gonna do. It's gonna take me a while to sort through. If I find the queen, I'll come back and let you know. And then I'll be back to, to let you know what I'm gonna do with all of these frames. I estimated there's about four pounds of bees down there. This colony should have had enough bees to get it through. It did a valiant job getting it through the end of January. And with every few nights of cold, I would call my mom and say, you still clearing bees? And she would say, yep and she could hear them, you know, through the ventilation holes. Okay, no queen in that bunch. I would think she would be closer to the entrance. This, these bees were from the back wall. I'm just gonna use my heist tool and get this moisture out of here. Any moisture I can remove will just help will hinder promotion of mold growth. So. 
So this hive does have an upper entrance, which was set to um, close, totally closed. I don't think it was set to vent. Interestingly enough, there are some bees up here. Wet, soggy bees. So this hive came with the upper entrance. I didn't ask it to be added. And I would not put an upper entrance in my hives if I was building them on my own. I'm in zone 4B. I don't think they're needed. Upper entrances are, from what I've read, used down south. Humid conditions, although we've got crazy humidity in Wisconsin, it's not all year round. I would classify our region as Mediterranean. Um, we do get crazy humidity in the summer, negative degree days and overnights with wind chills. I'm gonna get all this on this corner and see we got frost and all that. And I'm gonna move this off camera and just dump the bees behind me and look for that queen. I was hoping they were still alive. I am glad we had a warmer day though. I got out here to check it out. I didn't want to open this up if um, if our days had stayed colder, if we're going to get another, we're going to be cold again this week. Um, this today is an unusual day, but so I'm happy I am in here. If I had seen any bees flying out of the entrance, I would have not opened this up. Again, I'm looking for the queen. Doing this corner first because that's where all the moisture was. I got this section cleaned up as best as I can. The frost is gone. Letting the wind do its work today and hopefully drying that up. And then my next step is I'll go through the frames and pick off any of the dead bees that are on the frames and remove any of the frost. Kind of separate them for a little bit while I'm out here and hopefully the wind will dry those off as well. I'll just leave all the frames in the box for now. There's my pile of dead bees. Like I said, I think that it's probably about four pounds. Okay. So my next step is just to fling off all of these dead bees into the great yonder. side had a few more. I'm not going to worry about any that are buried inside the comb. The bees can pull those out. The new bees can pull them out. Because I will just just crush the comb if I
try to get them. So this was frame one and it did get cracked. And that's what's dripping on the floor. Frame two, it's pretty empty. So I'm gonna see if I, if the queen is in there. Queen was not in all of the bees I removed from the hive bottom. So I couldn't find her. Maybe she's not here either. I mean, uh, this is frame two, and there's kind of bees. I mean, there was bees in the cluster, but there were bees other places. So you think the cluster was here, and they just couldn't. This side, obviously, they ran out of honey on this side. This is frame two. They had a little bit over here, but they can't just move to the side like that. And there's some brood. So there was a queen in here at some point. Hmm. Okay. So all you do, make this messy and I'll clean it up. Just take your hive tool and scrape. Beneath that layer that we can see will be bees jammed in the comb. Not gonna worry about those. The bees will have to remove those themselves. I have had this fall, I did remove a few like that uh, with a push pin, but I probably won't take the time to do that. So that's how this one will be. So I'm gonna get rid of any kind of prop list that makes the frames not, ooh, I just nicked that honey. Um, Remove any propolis that makes the frames not be flush with themselves, each other. all over the place which indicates to me and there's that queen cell on frame th three indicates to me they were kind of walking around having a party between the frames some more brood right there And there's this chunk, it's, it's pretty chunky here, that prop list. That's what I'm gonna get off. Uh, what happens when I'm doing inspections is, there's this prop list there, and the frames don't fit tight, and then they, some of the guards kind of creep out. And there, just to make it a little bit easier for inspections. Initially, they'll fit nice and tight when I get a, uh, some package in here, keep their warmth in. And on this side. So there are bees up here. This is frame three. This is the side that's closest to the wind. Now that is so interesting. On the OMB1 hive, the other hive, it appeared as though they were eating up the side the entrance side. This hive, they're eating on the opposite side, which is closest to the wind. 
Alright, and looking for the queen. Lay our bees inside. Nectar, as you can see nectar in there. Honey up there, but some more brood. Queen was here mid-January and started laying. I find that interesting. Saw right there is perplexing. Frame four. They had totally eaten and I bet you they moved on to another frame. Yeah, there's a few right here. Looks like there's uh, pollen in there. There's a few bees inside. I dare try in this cold weather. I know if you crack them, the bees will come out. This is frame four, another queen cell, and a queen cup. Why they would have tried to make a queen after the fall inspection, I don't know. good thing about this hive is we've got a lot of pre-made comb for this near bees. We've got some honey to feed them right away when they get here because when uh, the package bees arrive there's nothing blooming in our area. All the workers are going out to see where the resources are and there's no resources. First thing to bloom here is the plum tree. And that's like a name. This is frame five. This one feels heavier. There is pollen in there. The honey on the top. Some bees buried everywhere. And I'm removing that propolis because when my new pet bees arrive, I want these frames to be nice and flush against each other to minimize heat loss. The bees that I get will get a super thick, double thick uh, pillow to help them. Because it's not going to be cold when they or it's not going to be warm when I get them. Queen cup on number five. I put a brood there. Thanks 
for hanging out with me on my vlog YouTube channel. I hope you've learned a lot. I hope you like the videos I'm sharing. And I share because there are not a lot of lands videos out there. This is my experience in Wisconsin Zone 4 USA. This is number six. We'll try to walk and chew gum here. Um, number six has got, oh, lots of nectar. Nectar and pollen. Lots of nectar and pollen. Um, this is also a chance for me to document uh, what these hives are doing. I find it much easier to, I'm a visual learner, so I like to see things, hear things, and read things. But visuals stay in my mind easier than somebody explaining to me how they cleaned out their hive. This was frame six. And we've got some honey running there. It's cracked. It's cracked. Honey running here. These negative temperatures. that I had marked a quarter of a honey and then I should have pulled it but for some reason I left it probably because there are bees on it so if they had a quarter of a honey to start with in the fall they hadn't used much of this at all they decided not to winter on that frame that's interesting as though they're wintering closer to the entrance. This is frame seven. I have it marked as a third of honey. Third. So it looks like they didn't use much of this one either. There's half. Here's a third. This one's cracked as well. Side cracked honey. Number eight. Eight is full. This would have been a frame they should have used in the spring. And they didn't use it at, well, they probably ate right there. They certainly didn't winter on it because there's none on the bottom there. None, no honey uncapped on the bottom. in the hive. Yeah, we've got honey down there. We have to sample. Oh, did you see the honey gushing? 
The little motion caught my eye. Find that interesting because the cells, I can tell the cells are angled this way. But by the laws of physics, if the cell below it is not as deep, it will gush, or if there's a little bit of a engineering mishap, or if it's cracked, Ooh, I can see this is all glistening. Oh, I wonder if that was water. This had frost on it. That's what's happening. This one had frost on it. I bet you if I review the video, this will have frost. Touch it. Yeah, it's thin like water. It's frost. Propolis along here where the edge will meet the frame adjacent to it that I want to make smooth again. Yeah, this one's got a lot of nectar and pollen. Looks like pollen that's just wet. So I perhaps let this rain because of there's so much pollen. Leave this one out. Get the air get to it. Frame nine. Then I have the divider board, which has been sitting on an angle. Looks like it's dried pretty good. All right, get all the ledges cleared here so that it seals up again. Okay. So no wax moths, no beetles, no mice. That's good. That's a good thing. Bad thing is we don't have any live bees. So I can only guess that the moisture from that little thin board that I left over frames like five, six, seven, and eight did not help because there was mold on that. There's uh, mold on the lid, I didn't show you that. Some little black spots and there was frost. Now that all that frost could have came after all the bees died. Same with the mold. We'll never know for sure. I'm glad I opened this up though today and got it cleaned out. Got it aired out a little bit, so that's good. Making the wind work for me a little bit today. I will leave all these in here, but I will space them out so they can air out. There's no reason why they can't be spaced out. I don't think there's anything else for me to do to get this hive ready for next year. Or I shouldn't say next year to get this hive ready for bees that'll be coming in a couple of months. So here's how I'm gonna leave this hive until I get new bees. This is the portion where they were residing. So you can see the black where there was frost up there. 
there is some mold on the lid, although just on this portion of the lid where the bar was, on the other side there is no mold. So that's an interesting observation. Uh, I'm going to leave the frames spread out so they've got some breathing room. I do believe I'm not going to put the divider board back in there. There's no reason for that right now. It'll just trap moisture. Okay, in conclusion, there were two frames that had queen cups at the bottom of the frame. Very unusual. I'm pretty sure they weren't there in the fall inspection. I'll have to go back and view my video. If the queen, something had happened to the queen during the late fall, early winter here, there are no drones out in my area. So this, this colony was doomed to fail if something had happened to the queen and they had tried to make an emergency queen. There was frost in the upper um, reaches of the high box near the entrance. However, I did put a thin slat of wood over frames like five through nine, just as an extra bit of a little insulation. I thought it would help them keep the nests a little warmer. That was a mistake. I won't be putting any wood there next year. I will just be doubling up my wool pillow for the insulation on top of the bars. There was uh, some honey gushers, so cracks in the comb of the honey frames. So the honey had seeped to the floor. I may come out here in a week or two and see if they've frozen up again. If not, then I will be removing those frames and doing something with those frames, probably cr crush and strain. All the dead bees are out. So the only thing this hive needs to do for a couple months is air out and get rid of the mold. So I've got two of the entrances on opposite sides of the hive body open to vent, those little tiny vent holes to promote the air circulation. And I think that's it. Um, we had a mite count. Uh, I did unscientific. One cup of bees, some alcohol, shook it for a minute. Estimate three, four, five percent, maybe. I'm not going to invest in the equipment for a alcohol wash, the cup with the screened um, piece in it, because I'm not going to treat my hives. Definitely worked on the frame one that I gave them. Uh, the other frames were as they set them up for winter. A few of them were all the way to the top, and there's nothing I can do about that. If they don't set up, set up their winter frames like they need to, I can't add honey onto some frames unless I give them full frames. They did give them that full frame one, and then the frames towards the end, it was two, four, six. Frame eight was one I gave, given them um, that they hadn't really worked on and frame nine had pollen and honey and i think they clustered towards the entrance and instead of going way to the other other frames further from the entrance so next year i'll probably only include six frames in my brood nest a full frame of honey somewhere and then just be watching in that following spring to see if i need to add a honey frame back in the additional frames towards the end may have contributed to the colony being too cold and then they would not be able to heat it as efficiently as they needed to as their numbers dwindled. Again, my mom reported bees towards the end of January. Uh, she thought maybe a time or two after she had marked it on the calendar. By the time I got up here that first uh, Monday or the first full week in February, there were uh, no bees coming at the entrance to die and no humming sound. All right, so it's been fun. All three of my colonies have had their own personalities, true to any, true to form for any of kids, right? They all got to be a little different. That's all right. I learned a lot. I had fun. We'll see you in a couple of months with my new package installs. And if we do anything fun before then, we'll be sure to share it on the vlog. Hope your bees are doing great and pulling through the winter. And we'll buzz you later. Bye.